So it was the last week of school, my junior year of high school, just before summer vacation, when myself and a bunch of my friends received a full week's worth of detention, Monday through Friday, every afternoon, in an unair conditioned school in Massachusetts. We got the detention because of some things we did on a class trip down to the beach. Now, before I say anything else, I will say we didn't do anything illegal. We didn't do anything that would shock you. It was really just the behavior of a bunch of kids who were super excited to go to the beach together and also super excited for the end of a school year. I remember playing a game of volleyball in the bus as we went down to the beach and the volleyball sort of bouncing all over off of every corner of the bus until finally, it bounced off of a friend of mine's hand and miraculously made its way through one of those tiny bus windows out onto the highway behind us. And we all sort of froze and watched as it slowly bounced down the road until it was out of sight. That and a few other things got us a full week's worth of detention. Now I learned some things that week. I learned that schools, I think by law, when they give you detention, can't make you do anything other than just sit and think about what you've done. They can't make you study. They can't put you to work doing chores around the high school. They can't really do anything unless your mom calls the principal and tells him to make you do all of that. Apparently, moms have that kind of power. And I learned that week that my mom was willing to wield that power. So as my friends and I made our way that first day for detention down to the detention room and we sat in the classroom at, at our desks, it wasn't long before the principal came to the door and he opened the door, he poked his head in, and he called my name and he called uh, another friend's name who I will not mention by name, whose mom apparently also wielded her power. And he brought us into the hallway and he told us that our moms had called and that we wouldn't be sitting that week. We would be moving and working. And that's what we did and it really wasn't all that bad. Today we remember the ascension of Jesus, and we hear it in two stories, one from Luke's Gospel and one from Acts. And it's the story of this last moment on earth that Jesus spends with his disciples. It's after his life, his death, his resurrection, he gathers them all together, and they spend some time remembering all the amazing things that they did while he was here on earth. And then before he goes, he gives them a command. He says, I want you to stay and wait, because God is about to do something new, and you'll know it when you see it. So while I go, you stay here and wait for it. And then he ascends, and they are amazed. They spend a few moments worshiping and rejoicing and celebrating as they watch him as he's carried away from them back to heaven. And then they do what he said. They sit and they wait. At the beginning of that week of detention, my friend and I thought that's what we would be doing too, spending a whole week sitting and waiting, watching as the hands on the clock slowly ticked by to the end of the school year and the beginning of our summer. But thanks to a call from our mom and the work of the principal, that's not what we did at all. We went out to the field house and we clear cleared out football equipment and dragged it back to the gym and stored it for the summer. We washed desks, we swept classrooms, we organized textbooks and put them away. We closed the school up. We saw parts of the school that we had never seen before. And while our friends sat in the detention room and sweated and waited, we worked and we sweated too. But we also laughed and we talked and we had fun. It turned out to be a meaningful week. If it hadn't happened that way, I wouldn't even have told you this story. Instead of sitting and waiting, we were moving. I think our God is a lot like this. From what I know about God, God isn't content to sit for too long. And so God's people aren't content to sit for long either. The disciples in the version of the story from Acts, as they gaze up to heaven, a messenger from God arrives and tells them not to gaze too long and to remember what Jesus told them. And so they go and they sit and they wait, and maybe they thought they would be waiting for an awful long time too. But when this new thing that God is doing arrives, it's unmistakable. And as soon as the Spirit comes, they are moving, they are working, and they are doing things they might never have imagined themselves doing before. This is what God is like. God is on the move, and so we are on the move too.
I'll be honest with you, it's tempting from where we stand today. It's tempting to sit and gaze, maybe back at the past that we left a few months ago, longingly. Or maybe we gaze off into the future, again, longing for a time that we left behind, hoping that, that what we had months ago will just resume someday soon. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Like I said, I, I do it too. But I'm not sure this is what God has in mind for us. Because I think the longer we sit and gaze at, at something we le we've left behind in the past, the more prone we are to miss the new thing that God might be doing in the future. The disciples waited, and they weren't disappointed. The Spirit came, and they moved. I think God is on the move right now as well. Sometimes it's hard to see, and we may not know exactly where God is going or what God is planning for us, but God is moving. Like I said, I wouldn't have even told the story about that week's worth of detention if my mom hadn't used her power to make sure that I was moving that whole week. It was meaningful. God is on the move this week in your life, in my life, and in this world. It's unmistakable. If we stop and look around, we might notice it. And if we stop gazing back into the past, longing for something we left behind, and if we stop gazing off into the future, longing for that thing we left behind to come back, we might notice what God is doing right here, right now. And the truth is, we might want to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen.